The price of Bitcoin is getting a bit of a corrective structure today, Monday, but today is the last day of September and it looks like we're going to be closing the most bullish September throughout the last decade. And every time we close September bullish, we've had an insane Q4, as you can see here with the data. But in today's episode, we'll be analyzing this drop. What are the levels of support? We are still holding higher low support trend line from this ascending channel. We're just testing the highs from last week. Is this a good long? Are we going to be breaking down? Let's talk about the levels of reaction of support to look for a long position. Also the internal levels here of support and what are the resistance zones? And if we break certain levels of resistance, why it will be meaning that the price could go to much higher levels, right? An invalidation for the local bearish case scenario. So make sure to stay tuned. We'll be taking a look at some many interesting news also that is happening throughout the last few days, guys. And a quick reminder, World Series of Trading is starting in October. Registration starts tomorrow. So if you haven't got a Bybit account, make sure to register with the link down below as you do get a $500 airdrop, guys, to trade all of these cryptos and you can keep the profits and withdraw them. This is a free airdrop. Sign up with the link down below. Just follow the steps and you have this airdrop, guys, and you're ready to register to the Bitcoin Census team for the World Series of Trading, guys. It's a $10 million prize pool that will be distributed to the top winners, and we are going to absolutely crush it this year. Let's go right away, guys. Technical analysis, keeping it simple. We are just holding the support here throughout the last few hours from the ascending channel as you can see right over here we've been consolidating here throughout the last few hours we're actually testing the highs from last week as you can see this is where we are basically consolidating now is this bearish are we bullish is this a good long as we are at support well let's talk about a little bit of elliott wave theory here guys keeping it relatively simple throughout the last few weeks we have been building up here very nicely an, a good uptrend okay from the low of the 6th of september we can see a wave one wave two wave three wave four wave five we got a completion here of a nice impulsive move to the upside. Now the next structure, we can see a three wave structure, very classic, very corrective, ABC, the C being the largest, and then continuation to the upside. So we got a possible wave B or a wave two here. On the next impulsive move up, we can clearly count also five waves to the upside from the low here created on the 16th of September. We got a wave one, wave two, wave three, a large consolidation wave four, and then the le next leg to the upside that was formed in between Thursday and Friday, right? We can clearly see five waves up here. So we got from this pivot low, another impulsive move to the upside. Now the question is, is this a large ABC three wave structure and we're going to start breaking down also in either a three wave structure or a five wave structure we're we going to start breaking down for a large corrected move I need to think that yes it's very likely that a deeper pullback is very much possible just because of the impulsive move that we've had throughout the last few weeks right we can easily count here an ABC we got five waves up two waves uh, three waves down and five waves up so the question is, is this an ABC or the most bullish case scenario, obviously, would be looking at this as a wave one, wave two, wave three. We in the formation of the wave four and we are going to get a wave five in the next coming days and weeks right after this corrective structure. So what we would need to know here is where are the trading opportunities, either for a long position or a short. We've got these two scenarios, the ABC structure being the most bearish one if we break down very aggressively because it could be an impulsive move to the downside and also the one, two, three, four, five. We're just going to get that fourth wave to sweep up the lows here that we formed last week at $62,400 and then create that swing failure pattern and get the leg here to the upside. But you might be believing, hey, we're breaking down the channel. This is bearish. We're going to get a larger pullback. That is also possible, but we need to react at certain levels to take a trading opportunity with good risk management, and that's going to be explained right away. So let's just say that we do break down here throughout the next couple of days, right? 
we are going to get that breakdown and we're coming down to the most interesting level for me which is these lows right over here from last weekend right we got the pivot low at 62,350 that was from last Friday not from the previous Friday right not the one last week the one from the previous week the lows here that we do have from this consolidation now without a doubt if we are looking at the bullish case scenario as in a wave one wave two wave three right over here we on the formation of a wave four and we're going to get a next leg up here to the upside entering into october what the level needs to hold which level needs to hold as the last support taking a look at the pivot low from this wave two to the pivot high of this potential wave three if not a wave c right and we are going to start breaking down this is something that we need to take into consideration right this is just an idea and a possible setup without a doubt a classic wave four target is the 382 Fibonacci and the 50% Fibonacci. Now, this Fibonacci zones from this wave end of wave two to the end of wave three, speculating on a wave four and wave five coming next, is exactly where we have these lows. There is a bunch of liquidity sitting right there below $62,500, as you can see on the heat map. So would it make sense to grab that liquidity and create a kind of a swing failure pattern, getting a bounce at the 50% Fibonacci, okay, at $62,000 range and create a failed auction and then look for the price to recover days after hitting that level. Without a doubt, this would be the higher time frame zone of interest to speculate on that swing failure pattern, failed auction, analyze very carefully because this is a zone where it could get choppy. You might just that hit that level, create a double bottom, but this is the zone for all of those swing traders that you would be interested to speculate on that wave five to get back above the highs from Friday. So that's the higher time frame zone where we should be holding to speculate on that wave four. We cannot get much lower than the 50% Fibonacci. And if we come all the way down to the 618, that is already overlapping the potential wave one. Now this would be looking quite bearish. If we drop down very aggressively, no swing failure pattern, and we hit this level overlapping this pivot, I'm going to say that that is bearish and we are likely going to see the next coming days being bearish with or without a bounce to go to slightly lower levels. That means that the bullish impulsive move will be invalidated if you overlap that pivot high at $60,600, okay? So that is a higher time frame zone where the price needs to hold to speculate on that wave five, okay? Bearish case scenario, keeping it simple. Yeah, we break down from the ascending channel support. We start overlapping here the lows from last week and we just break down very aggressively. If we do manage to hit $60,500, that is going to be bearish. Any bounce that comes after that is very likely going to form a lower high and we are going to get another leg to the downside on higher time frame. You might believe, but October is October. October is bullish, right? This cannot be true. Well, it's just looking at the technical analysis, understanding the invalidation for the bullish structure. If we hit this 60,500, I have to believe that this no longer will be looking impulsive and we're just very likely going to form either a three wave structure to the downside or even a five wave in an impulsive move. We do not want to see five waves down because that will be looking very scary indeed. I believe that a three wave structure is most likely and we're just in a very large corrective structure, three wave, three wave, three wave right over here, we'll be forming another three wave and we're very likely going to be forming a higher low at some point here in this zone. But that is just a lot of speculation. We need to see, see the data, see the momentum. Once we analyze that movement down, then we can speculate on, guys, this should be the bottom. We should be, you know, forming a higher low. We need to see that price action development to then be confident on that higher time frame scenario. Now, let's just jump in on the lower time frame. I know this is a bit higher time frame. Okay, we do not know what's going to happen next. But let's zoom in on the lower time frame because it's very interesting to see this movement down coming to the support of this ascending channel as we move throughout the weekend from Friday highs in a three wave structure. So you might believe, hey, isn't this an ABC? Well, like I mentioned, we already formed five waves to the upside in this last leg, right? There's five waves up here. So meaning that we could be getting a larger pullback. This is a very, very difficult decision. I don't see this a good long opportunity. You don't want to be the last guy longing here on the pullback because 
we've been very bullish throughout the last few weeks. So it's not a great long position, in my opinion, where we currently at at the moment. I would rather see some levels being reclaimed. What do I mean? Well, basically, if we were to reclaim the lows here from the weekend here at the $65,400, that would be a bullish sign because this no longer will be looking impulsive. You want to form a lower high here and then break down if we're looking at a five wave impulsive move down. So if we do overlap the lows from the weekend, then the pullback is going to be looking very interesting. This will no longer look an impulsive move down. And I would be interested in longing once I see a sign of strength, which would be basically overlapping the lows from the weekend. This will no longer be looking impulsive move down. And I would be looking for that pullback here after overlapping the lows of the weekend to speculate in a long position with bullish CVD divergence, then looking for the next leg here to the upside, which wouldn't make much sense just because of the possible completion here of the impulsive move to the upside, as I've explained, wave one, wave two, and wave three here in five wave moves, all right, or in ABC. So even though I would be a little bit skeptical here, but it would be a lower time frame sign of strength. If you overlap the highs from the, the lows from the weekend, it has to be a bullish sign just because this will no longer look bearish and impulsive because you're overlapping the levels of support from resistance, right? This will no longer be looking like a wave one, two, three, four overlapping and then five. This will likely be the end of an ABC corrective structure. This is why we would be speculating on, okay, we're forming a first wave here to the upside. We're looking for the wave two, wave three, and then obviously, you know, higher levels getting to 67, 68K. What if we do get a movement to the upside here? We get a little bounce. Well, obviously, this is the invalidation for the bears. What if this is a wave one, wave two, wave three? We're consolidating here very poorly. There's no volume. We're moving very three wavy and corrective, forming a little bit of an ascending wedgie structure. Without a doubt, I do see the possibility of the formation of a wave one, two, three, the fourth, and then creating that fifth wave, all right, getting the breakdown, okay, from the support of the ascending channel. So this has to be around about the $65,000 range, right, in between 382 and the 50% Fibonacci. This area, if it does get up there very choppy, no intentions of the bulls, and starts, you know, creating very aggressive bearish CVD divergence, I do see the possibility of the price breaking down here in a fifth wave. That is what I'm looking internally here with the Legends Trading Community. That is where I do give the analysis in detail. We'll be looking very carefully for these internal opportunities so we can actually scratch some dollars from the market. Taking a look at the liquidity here. Yes, on the lower time frame, looking at the last couple of days, 48 hours, there is a bunch of liquidity sitting above uh, the Friday highs. Uh, so, you know, we could be actually seeing that bullish case scenario, like I explained on the lower time frames, slightly higher time frame. looking at the last couple of weeks. There is quite a lot of more liquidity beneath $62,500. Okay. So that is why I'm a little bit skeptical. We could be seeing a little bit of, you know, a larger corrective move, nothing to be extremely bearish on the higher time frame. just meaning that, you know, that pullback could definitely happen before we get continuation to the upside. I see a lot of people very excited. October being October, right? Uh, we just need to be a little bit cautious analyzing that we have been very bullish throughout the last few weeks. We have been very nicely uptrending. We can count, you know, an ABC or a one, two, three, get a larger pullback, maybe for a fourth, then a fifth. It does look like the market could cool off, guys. Don't be surprised if that does happen. Be very cautious. We've been very bullish. A lot of people was bullish. A little bit of a cool off is without a doubt, uh, you know, a possibility. Now, let's take a look at the sentiment, obviously, of, you know, if you're waiting Bitcoin new all-time highs, it may need to wait until the crowd slows down their own expectations. There are currently 1.8 bullish posts towards BTC for every one bearish post, meaning that there's almost double the amount of people bullish than bearish market historically always move the opposite direction of the crowd expectation. When we take a look at this chart, extremely over bullish people here. Every time we've been spiking up here, we've been having that reversal. As you can see here, social post here, bullish, 
correct a move just days after. Same scenario right over here, correct a move days after. We are very bullish at the moment, okay? So a corrective structure without a doubt could be happening. It's also a very good indicator when people are extremely bullish. Something to take into consideration. What is bullish, of course, entering into October? FTX distribution payments will not start on the 30th of September today as court approval is still pending with the next hearing scheduled for the 7th of October. Now, there is about $16 billion dollars worth uh, that will be distributed to crypto investors that were invested in you know in FTX large amount of the, these billions of dollars will be going back into cryptocurrency and obviously that is new fresh liquidity to jump into crypto which obviously is kind of in confluence of the bullish october that we should be seeing right we had one of the largest inflows here last week on friday on the bitcoin etf 494 million dollars of inflows just last Friday. Very bullish indeed, of course. You know, this usually happens. You've got a lot of bullishness, a lot of bullishness. Then we get that pullback of a few thousand dollars. We already saw the start of it here uh, today, Monday, right? Getting a, a drop of just over a thousand dollars in a matter of a few hours. So just be cautious, guys. You know, we have been very bullish. We could be seeing a little bit of a cool off and we need to see a bit of confirmation for uh, the price to continue back up. Just getting back above the lows from the weekend for me is going to be bullish. And, you know, I would see the price continuing to the upside to test Friday highs. Taking a look at the next, uh, you know, piece of news. Uh, obviously, the, the inflows from last week, there were only 3,150 Bitcoin mined. And just with the Bitcoin ETF inflows, it's, a, you know, surpassed 17,000 Bitcoin. Now, that is more than five times more, right, than what was mined. Just seeing the scarcity here is absolutely fascinating. Fee and greed is at greed, guys. Be cautious. A lot of people are very, very bullish. Just don't be scared of a, of a pullback. You know, we could be getting a bit of a larger pullback here. We know the confirmation levels. If we get above the lows from the weekend, I would do see that bullish. If we do maintain beneath them with very choppiness, I do see that that leg down to test the lows from today. And we could actually see a little bit of a large pullback. If that were to be the case, just consider that we could be forming a five wave move here to the downside. All right. Looking at Friday highs, right? We get Friday highs, wave one here to the downside throughout the weekend, wave two, wave three. If we form a lower high here and then break down from the lows, we could be forming a impulsive move in five waves, meaning that the corrective structure here could be, you know, basically could be corrective and we could be seeing another leg here to the downside. OK, so if we do get a bounce and then break down from the lows, we're going to have five waves down. We're going to have to be a little bit skeptical here. We'll be breaking channel. Five wave impulse and move down. It could be getting a bit bearish ever so slightly for the next coming days. All right. That's if we do get that leg down here after a lower high breaking today's lows. Not much more, guys. Keeping it simple. The main reason we got rejected here on Friday, we had a naked point of control, okay? Sitting at $66,350. That is a high volume node on the volume profile from a week that we had here in late July. As you can see, that high volume node exactly getting rejected here on Friday. Big naked point of control. That is the main reason of resistance that we did have on Friday. Uh, main reason of this pullback as well. Also completing that intraday here. Five wave impulsive move up. Okay, it did make a lot of sense that the pullback was very, very likely after that move on Friday. Guys, thank you very much for joining and I will see you in the next one.